Hello everyone. Now for the Sword and Shield side of week 3 for the Pack League. My opponent is actually going to be Nico Ryan, which is basically a new opponent because I've never actually encountered this guy before. And he's going to be representing the the Lillypool FC team, if I remember correctly. So yeah. Uh, something worth noting about this guy is that this guy is actually going to be the first person that I actually uh, play against in this league that's actually a content creator as well. Like he actually showcases his matches from this season of the Pack League. Kind of like how I'm doing, although I'm doing it kind of late. But yeah, the reason why I, I kind of point this out is because um, this season, as well as the, the past two seasons that I did for, um, or that I'm doing probably for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pro and whatnot, uh, all of these seasons were not ever content required. So basically it was always optional to showcase matches from, um, from the pack league basically. So not a whole lot of people do so. And um, because of that, I just figured, you know, well, like it, it felt kind of weird to actually showcase matches when uh, when nobody else does but it is optional so yeah i find it interesting that it's actually going to be the first time that i'm actually running into someone in a while because i think the last time i actually um had any content of of you know of the pack league shown from someone else's perspective was when i was doing the very first season of the pack league which was in fact content required but these seasons or these latter seasons that i'm doing right now they're they're not required obviously so yeah, basically that's what that's basically why you see me like showcasing matches at my own pace is because I, I literally never had to even showcase these matches if i didn't want to i guess that's like the good thing about the league not being content required is that i don't have to follow any schedules especially because nowadays i've just been very lazy with uh delivering content and whatnot but anyways so all of that stuff aside uh, my opponent he has a a dracovish obviously which is scary on its own it's scary honestly but he has other things like conkelder and he also has uh the, the swamper he also has the reggie rock a lot of this stuff can kind of threaten my team if they are played correctly and whatnot skarmory can just be annoying because uh, i think the only thing i have to take that thing out is volcanian uh, and gudra but if i lose those two months then there's going to be very little i can do to the skarmory so obviously i have to i have to play my cards correctly when when dealing with this guy he is doable though if I get the, the Dracovish out of the way, his team is very much doable, but again, I just have to play my cards correctly. So yeah, anyways, um, here because of the Dracovish obviously, I just I was thinking of what I wanted to lead with, but because of the Dracovish, I just decided to just send in the Tangrowth obviously. Like I ultimately decide to lead with Tangrowth. So you can see, I was gonna click Steelix, but it's just like, nah man, because again, uh, Dracovish with just that fish, the Fish's Rend, if it's banded, and strong job boosted and all that good stuff it's just gonna be a nightmare to deal with so if i can scare it away for right now that'd be ideal that way i don't have to worry about it until maybe late game or something by the time it's already crippled and whatnot so yeah anyways here we go with the match he is going to lead off with um this thing uh the regular which is a good matchup for me in fact, I'd say it's so good that I don't feel like he's going to want to stay in with this and he'll probably want to switch out to something like Skarmory maybe. So because of that, I'm actually going to just go for the Leech Seed expecting the Skarmory switch in. Then after that, just go for Knockoff to knock off whatever item that Skarmory may have, be it Rocky Helmet or Leftovers. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Now, um, he's going to go for the Toxic, so he stayed in and... I was a little annoyed that he stayed in because I usually get annoyed when opponents stay in, stay in an, on unfavorable matchups because it's kind of like I expected them to switch out but you know even I do stuff like that myself honestly so I shouldn't be too annoyed honestly it'd be somewhat hypocritical if I actually were to be annoyed all the time but I do get kind of annoyed obviously it's because you know that when it comes to battling you usually want to be the one in an advantage in order to win at the end you know but anyways uh, now I go for the knockout obviously um here, I expected him to switch now because, again, he got the Toxic off, so what else can he want to do? But he actually stays in yet again just to set up the Stealth Rocks, which, damn. Like, if I went for the Giga Drain, I could have at least punished this guy for going for those Rocks. But now I actually, um, at least knock off its item, so at least I get to know what it is. It's a Choppo Berry, which kind of makes me glad it wasn't ever a Paschal Berry or a Rindo Berry. Something that would have probably made it a lot more difficult to take this thing out single-handedly. Now, like, I don't have to worry about anything. Anything that um, favors um, whatever mine I send in against this thing should have a good time, basically. Like Volcanion, for instance. I can now just comfortably steam eruption it should I send it in against the Regirock. But, yeah. 
So um, here my opponent is thinking for quite a bit. I usually get annoyed at this kind of stuff, but since this is the land mode basically, like we're using a chess timer so we don't have to worry too much about the timer being an issue. Like at least not from my end, because remember that in, in land mode, or the chess timer in this case, uh, we both have separate timers. So if his timer runs out first, then I win basically, whether or not I'm in a deficit. So yeah, the burden in a way is on him for like thinking too much on his plays and whatnot, which is... It's, in a way, it's kind of good, but it can be bad at times, you know? Because there's times where the matches just drag for so long that you could win, but if the timer just runs out on your end, then basically you still lose. It's kind of terrible how that... It's like a... It's a mixed bag, basically. That's why people say that even though the chest timer is better than the 20-minute timer, it still sucks anyways. Like, it's not the best way to battle, but it is a much better way to battle than the 20-minute timer and whatnot. But anyway, uh, here he's going to uh, send in the Skarmory and... I actually um, go for the Giga Drain actually, finally, but um, it doesn't do anything to Skarmory, especially now that I got leftovers as well. So it basically did like 1 or 2 HP or something, which is kind of annoying. So here, I believe I hard switch in the Crobat, particularly because I just kind of wanted to get these rocks out of the way. And this was also on the off chance this thing decides to set up spikes as well, like I was kind of maybe thinking, what if he tries to hazard stack me? I kind of don't want that because if I'm going to be switching around, I'm going to get punished on so many areas for switching in and then I'm gonna take a lot of damage like a quarter of damage in fact for every time I switch in which would be pretty bad for me obviously so because of that I'm obviously gonna uh, try to send this thing in I do run the risk of losing Crobat if the Skarmory is offensive and lands a Brave Bird on me but I'm kinda hoping he either goes for spikes or the, that the Brave Bird doesn't take me out because remember that I'm gonna come in with this Crobat taking Stealth Rocks damage and combined with the Brave Bird again depending on the investments it could actually take out Crobat, or it might just leave it very, very, like, you know, low in HP and whatnot. So here we're gonna see what happens. Opponent's still thinking for quite a bit, actually, so make that up what you will. But here, okay, so I send in the Crobat, and he's actually, surprisingly enough, gonna go for the Body Press. Because he went for Body Press on a Tangrowth, of all things, I kinda was expecting him to probably not have the Brave Bird. He might still have had the Brave Bird, but maybe he was actually predicting something else, which I honestly couldn't tell you what it could have been, honestly. Since I don't think my team really cares too much about Body Press. Maybe Gudra? I don't know. But I wasn't really fearing too much about the, um, I wasn't worried too much about the Body Press, actually. So here I'm just going to go for the Defog. Get rid of these rocks, because I could really use the switch-ins right now, but without the, you know, the punishment from the Stealth Rocks and whatnot. Here my opponent is now starting to think if he wants to stay in or if he wants to switch out. I think that if he had Brave Bird, he could just stay in and, and you know, go for the the Brave Bird uh, like until he goes down or until the Crobat goes down because Crobat cannot really beat a Skarmory unless it has Heat Wave. Which, hmm, he might have expected me to have Heat Wave, honestly. I don't know. But I went for the Defog. He ends up switching it out, obviously. He doesn't want to stay in with Skarmory. Either because he doesn't have Brave Bird or because he was fearing the heat wave from my uh, Crobat, but he goes in the Azelf now. And here, once again, I kind of had to make like another like decision here. It's an Azelf, obviously, and he hard switched it in. So that kind of gave me the impression that maybe this thing would be scarfed. And I was just wondering if I wanted to stay in having him over predict and just go for like a coverage move like U-turn or something. I honestly didn't want to risk it, so I just decided to go into Gudrun instead. So here. That way I can actually like take possibly a Psychic or Thunderbolt, uh, if he does go for it, obviously. I resist both and, well I don't resist Psychic, but you know I, I can take it well because Gudra's Pedef is pretty good, obviously. However, he, this guy is going to um, wisely enough go for the U-turn and actually get a favorable matchup against this Gudra. As for what he sends out, I don't actually remember. It might have been the Conkledor actually though. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because it was either that or the Dracovish. We're going to see right here. After he thinks for goodness knows how long. Because, yeah. He's going to go into this. Okay, yeah. I think, yeah, that's the that's the Conkledor. Okay. So here, once again, another like like another uh, situation here. Because Conkledors can obviously have Ice Punch. So if I stay in with Gudra and I'm not able to take this thing out, which I kind of can with the moves that I have right now. Well, I could go for Draco Meter, but if it's a Soul Vested, it will survive and then hit me with an Ice Punch and it may be able to take me out. So because of that, I end up switching in the um, the Tangrowth. 
Obviously, um, I know that this thing has ice plunge and all, but I kind of wanted to see how well can the tank growth actually take the ice plunge. If it can't take it well, then I just switch out for the regenerator, obviously. That was one of the good things about tank growth is that, yeah, it has moves that are, um, you know, like, there's like it's weak to a lot of typings, but if I take a hit very, very well, such as ice plunge, I can actually, like, switch out if I feel like it does way too much damage and whatnot. It does actually a fair amount of damage, but not as much as I was expecting, actually. I was expecting it to do just a bit more. In fact, I was actually kind of expecting it to basically do up to half, maybe, on the tank growth. But I was actually surprised that it didn't do as much, actually. So here, because of how well I took this Ice Punch, I decided to actually go for the Leech Seed. On the off chance he decides to stay in, which he does. And I take the Ice Punch once again pretty well. And here, um, obviously, I'm just going to go for the Leech Seed. And depending on how much HP I get back from the Leech Seed and the Leftovers, I may even stay in and just go for a Giga Drain. If, if, it, like, if it doesn't look like I can take it, then I might actually just um, switch into something else. But yeah, so here... Here I think I actually end up um, switching into Steelix, which is a risky play. But the reason I went into it was because he was constantly going for... Um, he was constantly going for... For ice punch, so I was kind of thinking maybe I could take an ice punch here and get the rocks up because I think that was the reason I sent in Steelix was just to go for the rocks afterwards because I felt like the way I can if I can take ice punch from this um this conkolder then I feel like maybe I can take an, a drain punch from the from the conkolder as well with Steelix which I can but it, the thing is that he kind of just went for the drain punch as soon as I sent in the Steelix which kind of tells me that he probably predicted me to switch into something um after the tang growth. Which, yeah, I guess it makes sense because he has me toxic and he probably knew I didn't want to stay in there for too long. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Here I'm just kind of wondering if I want to switch back into, like, maybe the Tangrowth again or maybe the Crobat or something. But obviously because of the um, the fact that he has a lot of mons that kind of threaten my team and I know that he's going to be switching around whenever the match is unfavorable, um, I decided to just go for the rocks. I feel like the payoff would actually pay well, very well, actually. Like, I, I feel like the payoff would be pretty significant, actually, if I actually went for the rocks. He's going to go for another Drain Punch, and again, I take it fairly well, at least considering it's a super effective hit, and it's coming from a Conkolder, which, again, 140 base attack, stab Drain Punch, that usually does a lot. If this thing is Iron Fist, then that probably would even do even more, you know? But, um, yeah, so, here, okay, I'm getting a decent amount of HP, thanks, because I, I actually have leftovers on the Steelix as well. And uh, here, I think I do switch out. I just don't remember into what, though. It might have been Crobat. If not Crobat, then maybe Tangrowth. It cannot be Volcanion, obviously, because if it was Volcanion, that'd be just taking damage for no reason. It does resist uh, Ice Punch and doesn't do a lot of damage with... um, Or it does a fair amount of damage with Drain Punch, but I don't think I want to take damage on the Volcanion just yet. Especially considering the Dracovish is there, you know? So obviously... Yeah, okay, so he's going to switch it out, and he's going to go into Skarmory now. But I decided to switch out into Crobat, obviously. Which, eh, isn't really a good matchup for me. I think I'd go for the U-turn here, because I was just like, no, no, no. I don't really want to deal with Crobat right now. Or Crobat, with Skarmory, damn it. But I don't remember what I sent in. Actually, I think I do know what I sent in on, on, at this point. I actually, I think I go f into the uh, Volcanion here on a U-turn, basically. After the U-turn, I just go for the Volcanion switch in. And... I think here I just threatened to go for the, the flamethrower, but ultimately just go for the steam eruption, because I could go for flamethrower, but the problem is that I am scarfed on this Volcanion, so if he switches in the Dracovish and locks me in the flamethrower, that's going to be something of a problem. There's also the possibility of him sending in the, the Registeel if he wants to feel that ballsy and whatnot, to go for the switch in the Registeel predicting the fire move. So obviously I felt like the safe bet was just to go for the steam eruption. Even if he goes into Dracovish, because Dracovish does resist Steam Eruption as well, but I do have the chance to burn it, obviously. So, yeah. Steam Eruption it is. We're just now going to see what the opponent wants to do here. He's going to switch out, which is fine with me. He's going to go into Conkildur again. I can only assume this this Conkildur is actually like Guts, like a Guts ability. Like it has a Guts ability because of the fact that he sends this in on the possible burn why not? On the possible burning move. Which, it does burn, actually. So that kind of just makes me want to, like, keep going for, um, for Steam Eruption. Just because if he actually, like, goes for Drain Punch again, he might actually do a lot of damage with Guts Boosted, uh, you know, Conkle during and whatnot. 
He does go for the Mac Punch, and this kind of does a lot, honestly, for a, a priority move. So, yeah, I kind of was convinced that this was probably a gut set, not an Iron Fist boost, like, um, like I was initially thinking. So down goes the Conkolder, so we don't have to worry about that thing anymore. That's one powerhouse out of the way. The other powerhouse is really the the Dracovish, if it's of the um of the Fishes Rending variety. He's gonna send in now the the Dracovish, which is the elephant in the room. Now here we're gonna actually go for a steam eruption again just to see what this thing goes for. It's also because I don't want him to like kind of predict me to switch around and him going for fishes right honestly. I want to see how well I can take whatever other move he has, whether it be crunch, psychic fangs, or even a dragon move. Honestly, like maybe I don't know what dragon moves this thing can get actually. I actually didn't do that much research into Dracovish. Again, I'm just still not very familiar with a lot of the meta. I just heard a lot of things about Dracovish being a powerhouse of, of sorts and whatnot. That's how I know that it can actually um, run the powerful uh, Fish's Rending set. So here I'm just going to finally just go for the the Steam Eruption just to see how much damage it does. I'm actually surprised it did very, very little, honestly. But um, I do get the burn, which is kind of good considering this guy had Earthquake on this thing for the Volcanion. So I think if I didn't get this burn, I might have actually even lost Volcanion. Might have. Might not have, actually. Might have actually survived, but I would have been pretty loaf at that point. So here, because of that, I think I ended up switching into Tangrowth again, or something else. Tangrowth, yeah, okay. Tangrowth because, um, yeah, I was expecting him to go for another Earthquake, but he actually switches it up again and goes for Draco Meteor. Does miss, and depending on the set, actually, that miss might have been huge because that means I probably would not have been able to survive with this Tangrowth. But as soon as I saw Draco Meteor, I was just like, you know what, I think I should not be here anymore. I think I should switch out into something else. I think I send in Steelix here, or, or Volcanion again, I don't remember though. One of the two, because I actually didn't want to actually lose Tangrowth yet, because Tangrowth is actually kind of useful, and plus he still has that Swampert in the back, so I feel like that thing can actually come very, very handy. So I don't want to have to deal with those shenanigans from the Swampert later, after losing Tangrowth, so if I have to lose something right here, it would have to be Steelix, since a lot of this team is actually, I feel it can handle Steelix pretty well anyway, so yeah. I switch it in, he goes for Draco Meteor again, and now lands it. And now he's at minus two speed death, so now I feel like I can literally do whatever the heck I want. I don't remember what I go for here though. I think he might have actually switched out actually. But yeah, and I think here's where I tried to go for the rocks again. I think, because I think he defogged them earlier with Skarmory. So yeah, I'm just gonna be like getting them off and whatnot. If he tries to send in Skarmory again just to defog them, then he'll probably um, I'll probably try to switch in Volcanion immediately. He is going to switch out the, the Dracovish and just go into the uh, the Azelf, which is fine with me, honestly. But I just wanted to get these rocks back up because, again, I need these rocks. I need to punish him for switching out a lot. And here, I don't really care what he does with the Steelix. He can take it down. If he has Flamethrower, then good for him. This will also kind of help me determine whether this thing is choice or not. I'm going to go for the Heavy Slam if he chooses to go for a move that doesn't take out my Steelix. He does have the flamethrower though, so I do lose the Steelix no matter what here. Now here I'm just gonna, I believe, send in the 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 Weevil, I think. Actually, no, I think I sent in Crobat, actually. Yeah, I think I sent in Crobat because I wanted to actually go for the U-turn still. Cause I think what happens is that well I was I was suspecting this Azel to be choiced. I think I also started to get the fear of this thing being possibly Focus Sash, given that it has not taken any damage yet. So, yeah, I think that's why I sent in Crobat, just to go for the U-turn, and then send in Weeball afterwards. Which, again, might have been a risky play if he actually was Choice Scarf, cause, or Choice Specs or something. Because after U-turning and going into Weeball, I could have taken a lot of damage with Weeball, maybe even take, uh, lose Weeball for switching it in and him locking himself into Flamethrower and whatnot. But it was a risk I kind of wanted to make anyway, so yeah. I go into Weevil, and here we're going to see if he actually um, is choiced. And from the looks of it, hmm, it is actually um, not choice card, so, or choice specs or whatever. It's not choice whatsoever, is basically what I'm trying to say. So that's good to know. So he might have been focused, Sash, I don't know. So here, what I'm going to do now is just go for, I believe, the throw chop. He's going to go into the. Um, the Skarmory now. By the way, it was not Throw Chop. It was actually Knock Off. It's because here in this game, you can still get Knock Off on Weavile. It's, it's in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pro where you cannot get Knock Off on Weavile. It's because I get that kind of confused. So yeah. 
but anyways um obviously i don't want to stay in on this uh this skarmory because you know the body press i don't want to take a body press on this thing i don't want to lose weave on just yet especially because he could come in handy against the dracovish and the swampert if i uh, lose the um the tangrowth so here i'm gonna go into Gudra. here i threaten to go for a flamethrower obviously he's gonna go for body press and kind of does a decent amount on Gudra actually Gooey kicks in, although that doesn't really matter because I can actually, I think I can actually outspeed this Skarmory. Most of these Skarmories are never invested in speed, honestly. And even if it was, I don't think it would be enough to outspeed Gudra unless you were like uh, a jolly max speed defensive one. Or, or you know, invest in not defense. Because you wouldn't invest speed and then defense, would you? Actually, it's possible, I don't know. But anyways, um, here he's going to switch out, obviously, because he doesn't want to take a flamethrower. And I think here, yeah, okay, I go for a flamethrower, obviously. But because I do have a um, Hydro Pump on this Gudra, I decided to just go for that just to see how much it does. This was somewhat of a risky move though because obviously this move could have missed. You know my luck already in this game, it's pretty terrible. But thankfully I don't miss actually. Here I actually landed, now I just gotta see if it can take out the, the Reggie Rock, And thankfully it does. So that's looking good. Now I don't have to worry about this thing. Also I don't have to worry about it setting up rocks again. So Unless the Skarmory has it, which I'm kind of starting to doubt it doesn't have it. Just because he hasn't really gone for anything other than body press on this Skarmory. I can only assume one of those other moves is like Roost or something. Maybe with uh, Brave Bird. And maybe with... Um, maybe Whirlwind. Maybe he does has Hazards, but he just hasn't had the opportunity to set them up with Skarmory yet. But, I don't know. Anyways, here my opponent is now in a tight situation. Because he's losing a lot of mods and he kind of hasn't really done much to my team yet. He's going to send out the... Uh, the, ta the this uh, Azel thingy. And uh, here, I switch out, I think. No, actually, I think I let Gudra go down. Yeah, I think I... No, actually, I don't. I think I switch out, but I just don't remember into what. It's either that... Oh, actually, no. Something weird happens here. Never mind. I don't switch out Gudra. Something weird happens here. I go for the Dragon Pulse, and I thought he could have hit me with a Dazzling Gleam, but he's just going to actually U-turn again which allows me to survive on 4 HP. I think if he went for something like Psychic or maybe even Dazzling Gleam, he might have actually been able to take me out, but he didn't. And now something he sends in is going to take a Dragon Pulse here. So that was kind of odd, honestly. This might have been a choke, honestly, because he could have at least taken out this Gudra. But again, like he had U-Turn, he had Psychic, he had Flamethrower. Maybe that last move wasn't Dazzling Gleam. It might have been Energy Ball, I don't know, or Thunderbolt. But yeah, um, here, I'm going to go back into Skarmory, I just go for the Dragon Pulse, and seeing how, um, like, seeing the decent amount of damage I do for a resisted hit, kind of tells me that this is definitely a fully defensive Skarmory rather than a Spadef invested Skarmory, so I'm definitely going to go for the Dragon Pulse again instead of going for the Flamethrower on the off chance he tries to send in something like the Dracovish or something. Something that resists Flamethrower, obviously. So, yeah. Here, opponent, you know, the usual, just thinking and whatnot. I'm gonna see what he's capable of and whatnot. Hopefully, it's nothing unfavorable, of course. But yeah, let's see. Okay, so he's gonna send out the, the Azov again, which is fine by me. Maybe now he can actually just take out my Gudra. Here, I believe I actually go for the the, f the Dragon Pulse, yeah, because Dragon Pulse does damage to literally everything that's left on this team, which is just the Dracovish, this Azelf, and the Swampert, so nothing appreciates Dragon Pulse here. So I think it's the safe bet to go for here. Interestingly enough, he's actually going to go for the the Sandstorm, which, yeah, it's going to take out my Gudra, but I really don't know how this benefits his team, honestly, because uh, his Dracovish is going to take unnecessary damage from the Sandstorm. So... Again, like, I don't know what the deal was there, honestly. But oh well. I take out the Azelf, though, nonetheless. So now, I think here I try to go into Tangrowth. Because I feel like Tangrowth can do stuff. So yeah, I think I go into Tangrowth here. Yeah, Tangrowth. It has to be Tangrowth, because... Yeah, Dracovish, I think the reason I sent in the Tangrowth was because he can't do normal damage to, to Dracovish and... Even if he goes for Draco Meteor, because it's a mixed attacker, I want to believe that it's not fully invested in special attack to take me out with Draco Meteor. 
Plus the sandstorm might even take it out if I actually if it does survive the Giga Drain. So here I'm just gonna go for the Giga Drain. I have to go for Giga Drain. We ought to go for anything else. Yeah, there we go. And here he's gonna go for Super Fang to cut my HP in half, which makes sense. But thankfully, it's not something that can one-hit KO me, so I can just go for the Giga Drain right here. And it does thankfully take out the Dracovish. So Crisis averted, we don't have to worry about Dracovish. This thing never went for Fish's Run, which is kind of interesting. I kind of just wonder if this was like maybe a heat set that was intended to be like for fun or something. But you know what uh, Like what I feel about um, fun sets. If it helps me win, I take those, you know what they say. But uh, anyway, so yeah. With that gun, that just leaves him with his last Pokemon, which is the Swampert, and obviously that can easily go down to the Tangrowth, obviously. I just have to go for another Giga Drain. You know what's funny is that I, we didn't see the Swampert come out whatsoever throughout this match. Probably because he was scared of the Tangrowth, but the Tangrowth did eventually catch up to, to Swampert, so it was going to go down to it no matter what. Here I just go for the Giga Drain, obviously. And now we're just going to wait and see what he wants to do. I do go for the Giga Drain. However, unfortunately for me, he actually does have the Rindo Berry, and given how bulky um, Swampers typically can be, and also the lack of an offensive investment on Tangrowth, it allows it to survive. And guess what? <laughs> yeah, it actually goes for the Mirror Code and actually takes out my Tangrowth, because that was a lot of damage that it did on Swampers, so... But that's perfectly fine, honestly, so... Here, um, I lose Tangrowth, but now I can just send in whatever the heck I want to finish it off. Now, I was considering Weavile here, but I ultimately decided to go into Volcanion because of the fact that um, uh, I, I kind of was afraid of Swampert being like very good on the on the defensive side, so um, I didn't want to risk it surviving and then going for a uh, fighting type move. And I don't know why, but for some reason I felt like this thing could get Drain Punch, even though I don't think it can. I think it can only get Break Break, I think Super Power, and maybe Rock Smash. But I don't know, I think at the time I was thinking that Drain Punch was a possible move, and I was thinking, oh wait, if he actually, um, if it survives whatever Weavile goes for, it'll go for Drain Punch and get its HP back. And obviously I didn't want that, so I just decided to go into Volcanion and just finish it off with a Steam Eruption, which also runs the risk of missing, you know, because it's not 100% accuracy. But if it does hit, then it takes out the Swampert without any other worries. And that's going to be the whole game. So, yeah, that was actually a decent match. Like I said before, uh, if you want to actually see um, Nico Ryan's side of the match, I'll leave it in the description below. For now, that's going to be the whole, you know, enchilada for us. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. I'll catch you guys for another match later on. And for now, just take it easy and have yourselves a good one.